This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. I do not think there's anybody with access to a television set who doesn't know who my guest this week is. Astronaut Sunita Williams, welcome to Walk the Talk. Thank you. It's really nice to be here, Shaker. Appreciate and, it. And welcome to Walk the Talk in Delhi and right next to the module in which our own astronaut, uh, we consider you as our own as well, but <laughs> <laughs> the, original the original, the first, yes. the Rakesh first Sharma Indian, right, right. came down, yes. Yeah, I had the pleasure of meeting him when I was in Hyderabad, and uh, this is quite a different capsule from uh, what I went up in the space right. shuttle. But uh, it's, again, just an amazing, uh, amazing ride to go to space, and any way, any way to get there is great. And, you know, for you, uh, 195 days out, four walks, I think 29 <laughs> hours altogether. Um, Record for a woman astronaut. Just tell well, us a bit more about it. That was um, the time went by so fast. I mean, 195 days. It just flew by, literally. Uh, we had so much to do. We're in the middle of the construction of the International Space Station, and that's why we had so many spacewalks. Is we're in the middle of uh, when I was up there, changing the temporary electrical and uh, temper temporary heating and cooling system to both more you know, permanent I, systems. I thought I'd come to that a little bit later, but you started it. You know, this whole <laughs> business of setting up a space station. I know that you know you take John Young very seriously. Uh -huh, uh, yes. uh, Apollo 16, uh, he walked on the moon. And he inspired you. I believe you listened to him. And he's always said that you need to do something. We can't carry on being a one-planet species. You need to fix that. Exactly. And the space station is just the stepping yes. stone. The st space station is just a laboratory, a collaborative of work from uh, countries all over the world together to help us to try to understand what it is like to live in space for a long period of time. And then we can use that laboratory to help us develop materials and new flight control systems, for example, of how we're going to uh, leave low Earth orbit, go back to the moon, and hopefully onto Mars. It's also amazing how in this country, uh, you know, we've had Rakesh Sharma, we've had a space program of our own, and we've had leaders uh, who, who've used the space program or the idea of going using the space to fire people's imagination. Mm -hmm. uh, but how it's you and Kalpana Chavla who've made such a difference. Yeah, I think um, I am on the, on the, on the edge of a, of a legend, uh, um, I'm thinking of the word I want to say here, a, uh, a legacy, I'm sorry. Right. Part of continuing a legacy of uh, Kalpana. Uh, she is just an, was an incredible person, an, an amazing friend. Friends. Yeah, and uh, I learned quite a bit from her just about life as well as uh, being an astronaut. I think one time she mentioned to me that she was, uh, and mentioned to many people, was also printed, a citizen of the universe. And I mentioned earlier at another talk that I, I think I didn't even understand that. She had so much foresight until I went to space. And uh, I think I would like to explain that a little bit to the kids. And that's part of my, um, my charter here in India, was try to explain that and explain that in a picture which they will understand. So I have explained what I saw from space. All the continents as, and as our planet, as uh, one big uh, place where people from all over the world live together. And the borders subject that I brought up many times now that is only really the little lines that we draw with pen on a piece of paper. They're not really there on the world themselves. And so when you're up in space and you see that, and then you see the va vastness of the uh, universe, you really feel that you're just one little piece, one little part. And I believe <coughs> what, um, what persuaded you to come to the very unscientific New Delhi was to meet <laughs> Kalpana's family. Absolutely. I was here in uh, 2003 after the Columbia accident right. and uh, came back with them. We became great friends. And absolutely, if I was coming to India, I was coming to see my second family, Kalpana's family. Yeah, because, uh, because for all of India, you know, uh, you know, there would have been a lot of excitement about you being up there mm -hmm. and a lot of concern about you, but you know, it got so heightened because of Kalpana and because of what had happened. And Absolutely, and, and uh, unfortunately, the Columbia accident, accident uh, brought back a lot of the ideas, the thrill of space for everybody because they understood, yes, we are still going to space. It became a little bit routine and people thought no, it was like, just everybody like, was going. Like climbing the Everest now. Right, right. <laughs> people and can climb backwards, people can climb on one foot. Now somebody wants to build a highway, so it's not quite so simple. Right, right. And, and, and space flight, no matter how uh, we look at it right now, is still experimental. We still don't know every single thing about it. It's dangerous. We're on the cutting edge with our spacecrafts. They're, 
just have enough power to get to space and uh, you know they're designed to come back with automated automated flight control systems and so we do have quite a bit to learn um, one of the uh, I think I'm always a what we call a glass half full person one of the positive things about the Columbia accident was that of this awareness of, of space travel and this awareness of science and technology and math and I think I feel that from the children here in India it's great. And, 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 and how all of India embraced you forget the other half yep. pardon my saying so. <laughs> <laughs> oh absolutely absolutely I mean it's 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 just overwhelming here in India just the small towns that I've went to in Gujarat and all the way up to the capital city here in Delhi. The kids, they're, they're the best. Their eyes got, get huge. The questions just flow out of them. They're so excited about space and really want to know about, and, 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 about it. And you've been competing with our victorious cricket team. <laughs> you've done fine, haven't you? Well, I, 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 unfortunately, I don't really understand cricket, but I am happy. Uh, India did a great job and won the big match the Never other day. Never say so. that to anybody in India. <laughs> on a flight, on the streets, you will get a one-hour tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope so. I hope so. One day that would be good. I love to learn how to so, play. So uh, you tell me, how do you, how do you balance this? If I may put it this way, Massachusetts and Mesana. Ah. <laughs> Um, well, you know, you're very American. I know you are a Boston yeah. Red Sox fan. Of course, of course. I have, you know, I have family and friends all over the world, and I'm I'm very lucky for that. Uh, um, people are just wonderful. But I feel a big connection, of course, to Massachusetts. I was a child there. I also feel big connection to India. When we flew over, I mean, I think it was just I was drawn to the window, trying to find where my father grew up. And so going back to that area, Jalasan and Kadi and Nadipur in the Masana district of Gujarat was just um, overwhelming. It was just so wonderful. There's a lot of history and friends of my uh, my father from when he was a young child. It was really, really you know, you wonderful. Talk, uh, I was reading one of your early interviews talking about your father. Uh -huh. You said what he did uh, coming from India to settle down in America uh, was perhaps the most enterprising, the bravest thing to do. Uh, I feel that way because, um, you know, I, I've challenged kids here to undertake things that they don't know um, because it seemed like my life was a little bit known. You know, every step I took, granted, I wasn't um, th that familiar with it, but I had seen other people who had become successful in that arena, for example, going into the military, becoming a pilot. Well, what my father did, he followed in his, fa his brother's footsteps coming to the U.S., but that also meant leaving behind so much that you knew to try something very, very different in a very far away place. We were talking about it um, just this morning about how he traveled on boat, not on an airplane, so it was a many day journey uh, to the United States. And I think that takes a lot of bravery to just go and try something really and, new and in another country across you grew the world. A, you grew up in a household full of diagrams of the human brain? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very funny. On our uh, dining room table uh, used to be all sorts of pictures of the human brain as he was diagramming and trying to understand the uh, neuroanatomy. Uh, while we were while we were young, we saw brains uh, in a jar as they were uh, right. going to be dissected and tried to under be understood. Yeah. And, but that somehow <laughs> didn't drive you into medicine or well, biology. I, maybe it scared me. I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, I think I've. And something I, scared you. <laughs> you. Wanted to become a diver. You yep, became a, a pilot. pilot. You wanted to become a fighter pilot, a jet pilot, became a helicopter pilot. Right, exactly. But, but second choices didn't deter Sec you. Right, and uh, I think the message there is what, what life hands you, uh, you take advantage of, you become good at it, and you enjoy it, then other doors open that you never would have expected before. And I think that's sort of how my life happened and how I became an astronaut. So. Uh, that's, I, I think that message is, is uh, one that a lot of kids should hear because I think you wind up, um, you know, missing out or uh, not being able to excel yes. because you feel that maybe you didn't get what you wanted. So then you feel a little bit bad about that, but so, instead so you, you, you take may, advantage. You, you, may get the, you may get the second best, but you can still become the best. Absolutely, absolutely. There, there are new things that you'll find. Tell us also the influence a Top Gun had on you and Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I was uh, graduating college, right. uh, that movie had just come out. And actually, I had never even known what Top Gun was until I went to the movie. And then I saw it. And so you see jets flying around. And absolutely, that's what I wanted to. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And uh, so that's what I put in for my first choice. 
And way back then, the um, options for women in the U.S. military were a little bit more limited, so I didn't get jets, I got helicopters. But, you know, I, that was great. I had a wonderful time flying helicopters, and I was able to get into test pilot school, which allowed me to then and you, get you, I a, believe a become a jet test pilot. pilot. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you sometimes knock your trainees on the head, or on the knuckles, <laughs> no, or the knees? No, no, I was nice, I was nice. But I, uh, I, I, um, that was also the first time I really felt uh, that some of this science and math can be applied to uh, real things that we do in normal life. And it took me all the way till I was in my mid-twenties to understand that. But where I think that's where... I only figured that in my mid-forties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Until but then I thought math was a complete waste. Exactly, exactly. And I, you know, I, um, I remember in college wondering why am I learning this? And this, that's one of these points that gets discouraging, I think, for young ch kids today where they, they don't understand why they're learning the things that they're learning. It's one of the reasons eventually I'd like to become a school teacher is to be able to bring back some of these practical examples in life into the and classroom. And also, also to convince kids maybe that rocket science isn't is rocket it, science. Isn't, <laughs> yeah, isn't hard. Yeah, yeah. Rocket science is okay.